Hey everybody, Austin back again with another Let's Play video. This time, it's going to be Caster for the PC. Now, Caster is a third-person shooter of sorts. It's a fairly simplistic game, and it's uh, definitely a budget-style game. It doesn't have really impressive visuals by any means, and it's actually sort of an indie effort. Um, it's a game that probably could run on old Pentium 3 machines. It's that, um, that basic. Uh, but it'll make a perfect game for, say, people that have netbooks. It runs really, really good on older hardware. I know it ran perfectly in my old Pentium 4 setup about uh, three or four years ago. Now, this game uh, came out back in, it was either 2008 or 2009, and I got it about right when it came out. I think it was on sale, and I checked it out, and it, I had fun with it. It's a cool little game. Now, um, there's actually... A variety of missions you can pick in this game. When this game first came out, the only one available was this top one here, the, the Midden region or the Midon region. But what's been kind of cool about this game is over the, you know, since it's been out, they've been adding stuff to it. They added a mod function where you can download mods and stuff like that, and they added a completely separate uh, campaign, the uh, the Lidonia Chronicles. Uh, I've never actually completed the Lidonia Chronicles, I've only completed the first one. Because really, when I completed this game, it was when it was brand new, and this was the only option that was available. So, we're going to go ahead and just do the mid-in region, or the Maidan region, whatever it is. And I'm going to sort of explain how the game works, and we're just going to play it and see how far I can get. It's not a particularly long game. I might actually be able to complete it on this Let's Play video, but we'll see. Now, you've got a map here, and you can actually click where you want to go. Obviously, when you start the game, you don't have too many options. But you get money and so forth throughout each stage, and you can go to this shop here, and you can basically upgrade your weapons. You start off with the you start off with the pulse gun, and what I'm basically going to be doing is trying to focus on upgrading this pulse gun because it's actually a really good weapon once you upgrade it. It's not a very good weapon when you first start, but it's it's pretty badass once you max it out. Uh, you've also got dashing, you've got double jumping, which is, is, they call it a super jump in this game. And you've got a whole bunch of other uh, items you get throughout the game. So let's go ahead and click cancel. I will click on my first map. And there is a story in this game, but what I'm going to be doing is basically just skipping through it. It's not particularly great by any means. And this first stage especially is basically just a training level. So what I'm going to do is basically just run through it as quickly as I can. And uh, if you run into these question marks, it's they're basically hints, like old school games. And if you uh, hit space bar a second time when you're at the peak of your jump, you can do a double jump. Holding the left mouse button will actually fire. And destroying objects basically will give you money. It's these blue orbs you see on the ground here. Just like so. If you double tap in a direction, you dash. And if you look in the top left hand corner of the screen, you actually have a dash meter. It's underneath your life bar. Your life bar is that uh, green blob up at the top. I believe it extends. Uh, that's your shield, actually. It extends as uh, the game progresses and you, you upgrade it, basically. So, all right. And basically these big flashing columns, these are your exits. So what you want to do is just walk inside of them. And that's basically it. We're done with the first stage, the training level. And I got a little bit of money, so I'm going to upgrade my pulse gun like I uh, suggested I would. And we'll go ahead and click on this next stage down here. Loading wet wasteland. And the goal in this stage is to basically pick up these orbs. Now the cool thing about these orbs is that they actually give you a lot of money. So whenever there's orbs in stages, you always want to go for them. Uh, if you look on the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you've actually got a radar and sort of a little mini map that shows you where these orbs are. So when you see it blinking, just, well, basically just run towards it. <laughs> So, here's one. If you look at my money in the top right-hand corner of the screen, it says I only have $40 right now. But if I run into this orb, whew, 
they give you a thousand, which a thousand is really good in this game. It's it's a lot of lot of lot of money. It's a big chunk. If you uh, see trees throughout stages, you can also shoot them. They drop these little red orbs, which are basically worth I think five dollars a piece. Actually, it looks like they're worth ten. Uh, yep, they're worth uh, ten dollars a piece. So. Uh, if you see a lot of trees, you can actually spend time in the stages destroying all of them and gathering money from them, which is definitely very useful. Here's a fish dude I definitely want to kill and get out of the way. <laughs> you really have to lead your shots in this game. It's... Uh, not like a traditional, say, third-person shooter where you're using guns and pistols and shotguns and things like that, where basically the second you fire, the bullet's immediately across the screen. It doesn't work like that in this game. Uh, so you definitely have to lead your shots. Enemies start off really basic, but they get a little more complicated as the game progresses. They get a little more challenging. Uh, even by the second level, the enemies become a little more annoying and difficult to kill. Especially when you have this dinky little pulse gun. So here's another one of these big orbs. Alright, I'm up to 3,000 something bucks. Now, I'm not going to actually run through the entire stage and try to kill every tree or anything like that. I'm not going to waste your time uh, in that regard. But uh, I am going to kill a few enemies if I see them, because they do give me a nice little chunk of money. Yeah, it looks like they give me about 80 to 100 bucks a piece. I think they're, the little blue pieces give you 20. Actually, they give you more than that. They might give you 100? I don't know. Shoots up so fast, I can't tell. <laughs> All right. Now you might be noticing that this level, uh, it's it's kind of, well, it's kind of bare uh, from an audio standpoint. It's very silent. All you hear is the rain and the thunder and lightning. Um, not every stage is like that. Kind of like that first training level, you have uh, sort of a trancey soundtrack in the background, which is is nice. It fits the game very well. I like the soundtrack in this game quite a bit. I think it's a pretty good soundtrack. Uh, if you go to the credits screen, you can actually uh, see who made the music, and they actually provide you a link to where you can uh, buy the soundtrack if you really like it that much. I don't think the soundtrack is in MP3 format on your hard drive once you download it, but I could be wrong. So, you know, you might want to look into your Steam Apps folder uh, to see if it's there. Uh, speaking of Steam apps, I completely forgot to mention, I'm actually playing this on Steam, guys. Uh, this was a digital download game. I don't think it was ever available in uh, physical packaging. And uh, it's a budget release. It's like 5 bucks in Steam, I think. I think it's still $5. It might be 10 but I think it's 5 um, It's definitely worth the price. I think it's a solid little game. I've played it uh, a couple times over the years. And I beat it when I first got it. Uh, a couple years, or oh, a few years back, actually 2009-ish, early 2009, I believe, is when I was playing it for the first time. And uh, it's a fun little game. It's unique. It runs really well on older hardware, and back then I was, my main computer basically died. My dual-core machine uh, in 2009, so I had to revert back to my old Pentium 4 computer. And so games like this actually kind of saved me. I was able to play decent games. Uh, that actually ran perfectly on my older hardware. So, all right, we got 6,000 bucks or credits or whatever they call them. So I'm going to upgrade my pulse gun again. And I probably should upgrade the dash and super jump. But what I'm going to do is actually save it because after this next level, I should be able to upgrade my pulse weapon again. So let's click OK, go to the next level. The pits. But yeah, this is a Steam title. Uh, you can probably get it on other download sources as well, uh, but I haven't really looked into it because I own it on Steam. I haven't really had a reason to look elsewhere for this game. Uh, this game is actually also available on iOS devices. It's possible it might be available on Android now. I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't really looked into it. But back when I had an iPhone 3GS, which I also got in 2009, I... Um, you know, this game came out shortly after, which was pretty cool. So I ended up buying it for my iPhone as well, which was nice. 
and uh... yeah maybe I should have upgraded my dash because uh... <laughs> it's gonna take a while to get around this uh, one other thing I forgot to note is that you actually have destructible environments in this game and if you look where I'm shooting you'll notice the floor is actually lowering quite a bit and it lowers much faster once you have bigger more explosive weapons and if you look around, I'm inside the crater now that I've just created. So that's pretty cool. The graphics in this game really aren't anything to, you know, shake a stick at, but it's still really cool. I like the simplistic art style. I like the, uh, I actually kind of like the fog, you know? And I like that you can actually sort of destroy through environments. It becomes more of a, a focal point of the, the gameplay once you get bigger weapons and once things become a little more tricky. We got some enemies down here. Gonna sit up here this time. It seems like those guys actually create some kind of shock wave when they hit the ground, which is kind of cool. And they shoot really fast. <laughs> There we go. Got him. There might be a second one down here. Nope. I think there's two on the other one. Alright. Working up the cash. There should actually be one more of these, uh... Or two more of these craters. I actually want to go in the other one. There's one huge one that I just walked around. Uh, but there's two small ones. And what you kind of want to do is just focus on the small ones first because they have those gems or those orbs, or whatever the hell you want to call them. pretty well I actually played this game for a minute prior to doing this let's play just to get used to it again and I got to this part and those guys were really kicking my ass you just have to keep moving that's kind of the trick with them here's the edge of the map you actually don't want to walk off the edge oh well in some cases this case you cannot walk off the edge some areas you can and uh, I think it'll give you like a warning to get back in or something like that that's kind of like what it was on the training stage so we'll just fall down here. The goal on this level is to basically just shoot this tree. So that's what I'm going to do. It's going to kill the enemies automatically when you do that. It's going to like emit sort of a shockwave. Just like so. And all those annoying enemies are going to die. And they're going to drop a lot of orbs. And that's basically it. So let's gather all the money. Money is good. Especially when it comes down to upgrading your weapons. Alright, so no more money. And I've got oh, only 5,700. Oh man. I was hoping to have 6,000 because I think 6,000 is where. Uh, yeah, six. Oh no, you get a bonus. Okay. Alright, so I'm good. I got 7,975. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy the next pulse, pulse gun upgrade. I'm gonna also upgrade my dashing. That'll help me. It basically extends your dash meter and uh, makes you dash for longer periods of time. And I'm going to do this second, third level over here because they both appeared at the same time uh, off the beat or the beaten path. So we'll go ahead and click that. All right. Now this stage, you don't want to touch that atmosphere above. It's bad. Uh, so yeah, don't do it. You'll die in one hit if you touch it. So just be very careful. And I also got here the first time and I don't know. If there's a way to get that orb. Oh, I know how to get it. 
you have to come back to the stage and you can use a weapon that actually raises the ground and so you can shoot it down and you can raise the ground that's how you do it okay and later on in the game I could have sworn that there's a way to dash across the water and I can't do that right now so Yeah, see, so having your dash meter up makes things a lot more convenient. Much more convenient. Now, this blue, not blue, but this uh, sort of yellow orb up here is actually a new weapon. It's going to be, I think it's the homing lasers. So we'll find out. No, not really homing. It's just... Yeah. And actually, I prefer the, just the pulse laser. You can use your mouse wheel to switch your weapons. And you can also hold the right mouse button. It actually pauses the game. And you can basically switch your weapons that way, too. But again, I kind of prefer the uh, the pulse laser, so let's do that. Fires faster, so I mean, you hit them more. It's basically, it's still comparable as far as strength, as far as I can tell, so. And that's basically why I was upgrading this weapon. It's, it's a solid weapon. And once I max it out, it's going to basically fire twice as fast as this. So, it's uh, very, very good once you max it out. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Whoa. These dudes popped up out of nowhere. I want to get all the money I can, but I also don't want to touch that atmosphere at the top. It's really bad. Ah, and here's the boss. Not really much... Yeah, kind of a boss. They become basically normal enemies later on in the game. Oh, oh, I didn't grab the money that he dropped. I killed him pretty fast. That was kind of crazy, actually. <laughs> All right, 3,200. I'm going to upgrade my shield. And... You know what? Let's go ahead and just upgrade things like... Uh, well... Your jumping, your pickup distance. We'll upgrade all that stuff right now. And what do we got now? Dead Ringer. Hot Rocks. We do Hot Rocks. I remember this stage. Now this is a level where, you know, you can actually shoot through the floor and uh, you actually reveal lava below. So that's something you kind of want to be careful about. Not such a big deal when you have just the pulse laser, but once you get, I think you get the green weapon in this game and it actually blows through uh, the ground very easily. So you have to watch out for that. And there's a bunch of these little creepy crawly dudes in the ground on this stage as well. Here we go. You can actually charge this weapon up and unleash sort of a bigger blast, or you can just mash it like so. It's better to charge it up though, it's much more useful. And on this stage, you basically have to blow a hole through the ground because that's how these uh, crawly guys die. They touch the lava and they basically explode into money. <laughs> Keep touching the lava. That's bad. Alright, let's get back over there. Ah, 
Oh, come on, man. Shit. I think your life recharges, so I'm gonna go ahead and just sit here and let it recharge. See how long it takes. <laughs> Destroy the ground. All the way through the lava. All right. Yeah, right in the lava. That's good. <laughs> nice and hot. Let's go back with the pulse gun on this one. Got him. All right. Is there anything else to get over here? That's the question. And it doesn't look like it. And going for their money is probably, well, what the hell, let's go for it. Oh yeah, nice and hot to get some money. <laughs> it's worth it, though. Because money's good in this game. I mean, really, what game is money not good in? I mean, when you have shops and upgrade uh, abilities like that, it's you gotta have money. Uh, so, let's see. 4,700. So, we'll go ahead and upgrade... Uh, we'll go ahead and upgrade the Blast because it's a solid weapon. And we'll go ahead and upgrade uh, the dash again, so we can dash even longer. Dead, uh, dead ringer. Uh. All right, come on, come on. There we go. Just trying to skip through that little sort of camera cutscene thing. So once you get your stuff upgraded, the game actually becomes a lot faster. You spend a lot of your time dashing, as you can kind of see me doing. And I think the, the game becomes actually a lot more enjoyable once you do that. I like the game a lot more the more you progress through it. It's just, when you can run up walls like such, it's, it's cool. Watch out for these guys. They actually raise the ground. Kind of a cool effect when they uh, shoot out their ball of whatever it's called. I guess that's basically it. You just had to get the orbs. Let me see if there's anything else around here. It's probably not. Because if there was, it would probably come up on my radar. <sighs> yep, I guess that's it. Short and sweet level. Eight thousand. I'm gonna go ahead and maximize my pulse, and we'll leave it at that. Lake bottom, shifty sand, petrified pillars, treacherous tower. We we'll do lake bottom.
There we go. You see the pulse gun is really fast now. It's much better. So, all right, let's get on with this. Oh yeah, the water rises. That's that's right. Now I think I get another weapon in this level right here. And it actually lets you raise the ground. Yep, right here. The equator attack, I think that's what they call it. You can basically raise the ground just like so. It's pretty cool. <laughs> you can make big spikes if you want to. That's the end of the stage. These are really short levels. I'm not complaining because it gives me the ability to show you a lot of the game instead of just a couple stages. So I'm gonna upgrade my. Actually, I'm gonna upgrade my dash again because having that maxed out is great. And likewise with my super jump, it just makes me be able to traverse each stage much faster. So, all right, shifty sand. We'll go to shifty sand. Looks like I have to find a tree. Find and heal the infected tree. Yes, ma'am. Try to just get all the money I can. Said it once, but I'll say it again. Money's good in this game. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, looks like there's some hidden gems every now and then, which is very good. We got some enemies underneath the sand here. You can just use the big green one to basically eradicate them pretty quickly. There we go. Finally got him. Those guys are kind of annoying. They're not... Eh. <laughs> just slightly annoying. That's all. So, just look in your map. Head towards the big glowing objects on it. And that usually takes you where you need to go. That dude's got a big chunky looking face. <laughs> Very chunky. <laughs> Alright. Let's get on with it. Chunky face! <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna go with super jump again. And we'll do shield and pick up distance. 
And this eruptor weapon. Petrified pillars. Oh, I remember this stage. I remember this one being kind of annoying when I first played it back in the day. All right. If you need to look below you, you can kind of just swerve, uh, swivel the camera or angle around to see what's down there. So you don't actually have to move down. That's one thing that's kind of nice about the cameras in this game. One hit at a time. This green weapon is really good just because it's it's powerful. Oops. <laughs> Keep falling into that acid stuff, whatever it is, that water. Oh shit. And it looks like the green shot basically goes wherever your crosshair is, which is nice. Except it only goes so far, it looks like. Yeah, you can walk on the ground. You just have to, or walk in the water. You just have to get your uh, dashing ability up. Okay. All right, so the exit's open. I think I've basically killed every enemy, so. Oh, I missed one. <laughs> nice work, Austin. You missed one. Thanks. Energy balls found five out of eight. So yeah, it looks like there's some hidden ones. Okay, that's cool. I'll go ahead and upgrade. Mm -hmm. Super jump, and then we'll do this one. This next level or two, I should get the Seeker or the Stun. One of them I should get. So, Treacherous Tower. I don't even know how long it's been so far, but I know we're already, you know, pretty far into the game. This game is not very long at all. So I'm going to just kind of try to, you know, rush my way through the rest. And this one, you can actually just run up the wall like so
Can't even hit him. <laughs> like I said, you really gotta lead your shots in this game, otherwise you're you're not gonna hit much. Fortunately, enemies like that are that are more or less kind of stationary. They're a lot more, uh, a lot easier to hit. You gotta be kidding me! Is that the exit already? No, it's not. I thought there was a gimmick. <laughs> this is—it's a trap. I got money. Make it back up. Do I have enough dash? Yes, I do. <laughs> Lots of money. Seven thousand. Gonna upgrade my shield and my pickup distance. Actually, no, I'm gonna upgrade my shield completely. My shield is maxed out now, which is great. White drifts, black trenches, <laughs> white and black. All right, white drifts. I think this is where I get my my next weapon. I think it might be the homing. We'll find out. I'm a sucker for snow stages. This level looks pretty cool. Says something about it not doing any damage at first. I probably should have read what it said. <laughs> but I'm just gonna use this instead. This is a lot more powerful. up here any secrets any missing orbs ah eh, whatever I'll just run on the side of the wall because that's how I roll <laughs> look at that up and down up and down up and down up and down there's a hill though let's see if there's anything over here Damn it. Alright, fair enough. Let's go. Alright, I think I've only got a few more stages and then that's it. We'll, we'll see. 3,000 pickup distance. Probably not really necessary. Black trenches. Yeah, this is one where you've got to find the tree and it basically lights up the whole stage.
like so. That's kind of cool. And it basically kills every enemy on the screen. I'll take it. Some drum and bass now. I have a hunch. Looks like my hunch was wrong. <laughs> There's a little bit of an indentation there on the top, so I thought maybe there'd be an orb down below, but I guess not. There's another one right there. Whoa, hey, buddy. <laughs> Just appeared out of nowhere. Thousand upgrade the big green weapon again. Uh, light source. Gotta hit the tree again. And this is the seeker. Yep. There we go. Now we got some homing attacks. Wow. It's starting to get choppy for some reason. One of their fraps is starting to uh, chug. understand how you're supposed to heal a tree by shooting it, but hey, if it works, it works. Man, these stages are a lot shorter than I remember them being, but we'll upgrade the Seeker. <laughs> Alrighty, down in the bio. Bayou, Bayou, Bayou. This isn't the boss stage, is it? No, it's not. The final boss stage actually kind of looks like this, but it's it's not. I remember when I first played this game, <laughs> this level in particular, I literally just like spent like a half an hour trying to find all the trees. There's so many of them. It's kind of addictive, just going for the trees and collecting all the money. <laughs> and using your lasers to hit all of them. Kind of like so. Oh, there.
The seeker weapon is obviously good for enemies that are, you know, they fly in the air, they dodge around. They're pretty annoying, so it's nice having the homing missiles. Now on this level you can just look at your radar and it basically tells you where the enemies are. So this game is really easy in that regard. You don't usually have to search for you know where you need to go. I kind of like that. I like it when games are simplistic. Now I like it when the games are complicated too and they make you think, but you know, there's a time and place for it. And this game I think does pretty well to be just kinda arcade style in a way. And just focuses on the action, and that's basically it. So I don't I don't mind that at all. You know, especially for a budget title. You know, I don't know. When I'm paying very little money, I kind of expect quick pick up and play experiences. I don't expect very involved offerings. You know. Um, so I mean, I'm I'm perfectly fine with how this game is. And this game is definitely cheap. It's a it's a budget title, so again, I think it's about five dollars. I don't think it's any more than that. And Steam oftentimes has their holiday sales and things like that, so uh, you should be able to find this game for just a couple of dollars at you know through one of their sales. I've definitely seen it go on sale quite a few times, so. Missing something? Oh, there he is. Great work, Austin. Thank you. <sighs> what do I want to upgrade? We'll do Seeker. And then Stun. Even though I'm not going to use it. Rainy Rumble. And you know, actually what I want to do is go back and do, uh, uh, which one was it? Uh, the Pits, the Beaten Path. I think it was the Beaten Path. It was the one where there was basically money. Yeah, that's, that's the one. And this is the one where I can raise the ground and get that leftover money. Just like so. Money is mine. This is a good way to grind for cash, just going through old stages again, but I'm not going to do that. I just wanted to go get that thousand piece, which is, which is nice. It's a good little chunk of change, so. And, you know, once everything starts to cost $8,000 or something like that, you know, every little bit helps, so. Now let's see if I can, oh, you can just do it stages again and again and again. I could literally just keep doing this level over and over if I wanted to. I see. And I'd still be able to gather the money every time. Hmm. So that's pretty good. I got... Let's see if I get a bonus. Great work, Austin! You just beat a stage you've already finished. No, no bonus. So, hey. $3,300 as opposed to whatever I had before, which was a lot less, so I'll take it. Rainy Rumble.
Oh, I think this is the last boss, guys. Uh, I think this is it. And I don't even have everything upgraded. I feel kind of sad. There's some strong flanks energy. Mainly because there's a big-ass dude that's probably going to kick your ass. Doesn't seem very apparent. But the last boss is actually huge, if I recall correctly. And he's got tentacles. And it's kind of... Yeah. <laughs> There it is. Yeah, that's kind of disgusting. <laughs> Big dude with tentacles. Grabbing you and slowing you and... Yeah, move out of the way. How am I getting hit? Again, you gotta leave your shots. Especially true with these guys. Did I die? No, he died. And that's basically it. I beat the first campaign. And at first, when this game came out, this was the only campaign, so... Uh, I'll just say I beat the game. <laughs> The Lydian Chronic the Ladonia Chronicles are now unlocked in the chapter select menu. Sweet. I'm not gonna play the Ladonia Chronicles, guys, because if I recall correctly, it's a lot more challenging. And it's gonna make for just a really, really long video. I'm gonna go ahead and just basically cut it off here. So I'd like to say thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I didn't do as much talking as I normally do in these Let's Play videos, but you know, eh. I just was kind of focused, I guess. So let me go ahead and save my progress. Yes. And exit. Or go back to the title screen. If, I, if you go to exit game, you actually literally exit out of the whole game, which is bad. Um, I've actually done that on accident before. So, but yeah. Again, guys. Uh, again, I'm Austin. Um, thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this Let's Play of Caster for the PC. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Take